Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this panel um, during Kadaf Online. This is on NFTs and the environment. So I would like to just start by introducing everyone. My name is Elizabeth. I'm part of the Kadaf team, but I'll then have all the panelists introduce themselves. Jason, if you want to start. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Elizabeth. Um, and thanks to Kadaf for, for holding these panels. I always enjoy them. Uh, so I'm Jason Bailey. Lots of folks know me as Art Gnome. I've been writing about art tech for the last five or six years at artgnome.com. Um, grew up in a family of engineers, but studied art. So kind of just naturally live at the intersection of art and tech. Uh, very early collector of uh, NFTs in late 2017, but more broadly, just a big fan of digital art and generative art uh, in particular. And more recently um, started the Green NFTs Initiative, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later in the, in the conversation. So thanks again for having me. Awesome. Alex, you wanna pop in? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks Kada for having me. Uh, enjoyed it last year and great to see how it grow, <laughs> grows over the years. Um, my name is Alexandra Artsamanovskaya. Most people know me as Alexandra Arts or Alia Perez. I've been working for the last six years with arts and technology. Uh, initially started as sort of one of the first employees for the top level domain dot art. Um, and now we've grew to about a community of over 100,000 people using the domain, uh, working on partnerships specifically and initiatives where you sort of combine the online space with the traditional or digital arts markets. So that's been very exciting. And last year I launched the gallery, which is called Electric Artifacts. And now we work as a studio uh, working with different artists, including Mike, <laughs> who's right here on the call with us, to, um, to onboard them and sort of pave the way towards uh, a digital future and leveraging the technology like blockchain, which we're gonna discuss today and um, looking forward to it. Amazing. All right, Sophia. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Sophia Crespo. I'm a generative artist and I'm focused on tools like mach using machine learning or neural networks to uh, visualize nature and to think about how nature is represented on the internet uh, as data and also how we can connect through it, uh, connect with it through technology. So that's basically. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, and then Mike. Hey, uh, thanks for having me too. Um, my name is Mike Taka. I am uh, also a generative artist and been working at this, just like Sophia with uh, AI since sort of the early days of AI art. Um, and uh, during the day, I, I work in climate science research. Very cool. Amazing. Um, well, I, thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'll let you finish. I didn't know if you were done. Oh, I was just saying that my, I, I have not been super active in the crypto art space until this year um, through Alex, uh, essentially, who, who drew, drew me into it. Nice. All right, great. Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting panel because we have a lot of different perspectives coming in. So thank you once again for, for joining me. Um, so I guess just kind of to get us started, um, it seems like in the past few months, there's been a lot of discussion about the environmental impact of NFTs, um, especially as you know, the NFT craze has definitely become more mainstream in the art industry. There's been a lot of um, you know, looking at that in regards to cryptocurrency and then crypto art and NFTs. So I guess if I, we could all just kind of like chat maybe about the um, like your opinion on the environmental, the environmental impact of NFTs and how we think that the crypto art world should proceed ethically? Um, well, I'm sure many people here can talk more about the technical aspects of things. I have more of a perspective in a sense of um, the social stigma that took place at the beginning and how we were sort of working with the community to address that. So I would say in about March, we had the first session um, back then Clubhouse was a thing. I don't know if it's still a thing now. Um, and we had a little discussion with actually Silly Tuna, who more people know now because he sold the CryptoPunk at Sotheby's um, earlier this month. But he was very vocal about explaining what actually the technology is and the fact that you know it's not the NFTs that are causing the most harm, but it's actually the underlying technology under it. And especially the ones that's facilitating a lot of the crypto uh, cryptocurrencies, and this is this is sort of what drove us um, all these discussions 
and helped us really find um, Tezos based tickets Nunc, which just launched um, early March. And, um, and I think Mike could add a little bit more because we wrote a series of articles about the considerations the artist was taking, and especially he was taking uh, when making that decision. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I remember earlier this year, we had some pieces of mine up uh, with electric artifacts, and then this came up as like, can we launch these as NFTs? And, um, and so I did obviously some looking into the um, uh, the energy impact of of the blockchains, um, and it was pretty clear to me personally that that for me, um, I was not super excited to launch um, my NFTs on Ethereum uh, on the Ethereum blockchain just because the energy use is so large, um, and and the carbon footprint is so large, and so we started looking at alternatives, and and so people have already sort of compiled many alternative uh, options. And when there's alternatives, I felt like, why not encourage those alternatives? Um, because I see them as the future and it's worth doing. Um, you know, if there are no alternatives, that's a different question, but there are alternatives. And even though I felt that Econom, for example, was a risk in terms of maybe not selling as high uh, or, or not getting as much exposure, it felt really exciting to me to, to just be part of that early movement and just help make it happen. And so, and it turned out to be just fine. And now it's a very vibrant community and it's really great to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to, to kind of add my thoughts to that as well. So I, I'm a big fan of Hicket Nunk as well. It feels a lot like, you know, when I got into the, the NFT or crypto art, we were calling it back then space in 2017, it was much smaller and more supportive and less commercial. Um, and I think, uh, you know, people were making and, and buying and trading and selling without the assumption that these things were going to have a secondary market and sell for a ton of money. But at the same time, there was generally this sense that we were trying to build a new art world, really experimental. Um, and I think that gets lost sometimes in the conversation about the environment. Like if you if you came to NFTs in the last five or six months, you probably saw articles about seventy million dollar you know artworks being sold by two hundred year old auction houses, and it's like well, there's nothing new there. Like, why do we have to have all the old system plus burn down the planet, right? But I think if you were here for the full ride, part of what you saw in the beginning was we really truly wanted to build a, a more equitable system for artists. And I think, um, you know, we see that in, sure, there, there are maybe um, sort of new stars. Some people are arguing we have sort of like a new star system, but I think those stars are coming from different places than they traditionally would. So in the past, you know, most of the artists that um, made a lot of money or, or in the museums you would go to, at least in the US, look kind of like me, right? They're white guys for the most part. Um, and if you weren't born with the right connections and the right economic bracket or the right gender or the right color, your chances of doing well in a traditional art market were pretty small. So we were trying to build, um, albeit altruistically, an entirely new system and somewhat naively hadn't really looked at the, the ecological implications until uh, Memo Aikton did us the favor of sort of writing out that paper. So I think there's a lot of debate um, on both sides. What was hard for those of us that aren't climate scientists or aren't that technical, um, but wanted to support um, this new system or take advantage of this new system. I mean, I've got friends in Mexico and Nigeria that you know managed to feed their families through COVID um, as a result of this new system. Um, and Along come the people after sort of Memo's article, which I think was important to draw attention. And we saw a lot of finger wagging and pointing and like even death threats in some cases were reported from some artists, right? So, I mean, I, I looked at that and I guess it was late February, early March and thought, you know, this is like not the way to do it, right? So like good to draw attention to it, but like let's take all this energy and all these smart, young, talented, you know, creative people and try to redirect it towards trying to solve the problem. Um, so that's when I put out the tweet that asked, hey, if I, you know, if I threw $1,000 in and donated a bunch of my time, would folks help me build this, this green NFTs initiative to look at better ways um, of potentially uh, doing this more efficiently, but also just educating artists, um, because I think it was really easy to get caught in the crossfire uh, at the time. So, uh, you know, fast forward, we ended up raising from the community um, about $100,000. Uh, the first round, we, we gave out 60000 in grants to people that either had educational um, you know, offerings or, or uh, uh, more solutions or code-oriented uh, offerings. And 
you know, I, we knew in the beginning that wouldn't solve the whole problem, um, but we think it's really important that the community um, actually own this problem and have a say in, in, you know, how it moves forward. So most of those solutions were Ethereum oriented. I'm pretty much buying exclusively on Tezos and Hick myself over the last few months because that's where I feel comfortable. At the same time, um, that doesn't Hick doesn't solve the problem because the majority of NFTs are still being minted and bought and sold and traded on Ethereum, right? So we need um, we need Ethereum to move to POS faster um, as well and to continue to see development and innovation on on that side. But I do think it's great, um, you know, the the community spirit, uh, the the quality of art, you know. Um, and the, the POS and green solutions that we're seeing um, in, in Hick and Tezos, I think uh, it doesn't just correct for the, the um, environmental issue, it's actually correcting for a lot of the other behavior that I think is maybe um, not that great that we're starting to see emerge on the, the um, Ethereum NFT side. Yeah, so I have a very conflicting <laughs> point, of, point of views at the moment. Um, so on one hand, I think that it's really important that this whole conversation happened and it's really important that to be talking about this. Um, on the other hand, I think that um, like as kind of constructive feedback, uh, like I wish that the, the conversation hadn't been started with like exposing a number on a website, like that kind of can carry so much shame for an artist you know i wish like um you know that that it hadn't been done that way because my initial opinion was like oh no like this is such an easy way of linking like you know sofia crespo and she like polluted this much you know like she must hate the planet <laughs> to be doing that and I've also received uh, some of these uh, kind of hateful messages, which I had to delete and deal with. Um, and, you know, like we're, I don't know, like artists, we're also kind of sensitive. Like some of us are going through depression, mental health, you know. Um, I think it's not that easy, like to kind of live a life as an independent creator and also like, suddenly have to deal with all of this as if we were the ones that like uh, kind of put society into this problem to begin with like um, so yeah I have a lot of kind of <laughs> that uh, in me which is like okay well this is a great thing to talk about but shame and like the whole stigma around earning as an artist, you know, a lot of people aren't really uh, against the, um, the 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 whole like environmental issue to begin with, but they're more about like how the auction house system, you know, like bidding uh, over an artwork, how that's like reinforcing capitalist uh, kind of mentality uh, onto art, and how that like is ultimately a toxic thing. And I think like okay, well um art can't just solve the system like this was already happening and it was happening like maybe behind closed doors and as jason mentioned like maybe there were just a few who got to enter that game uh and see it uh but now it's just happening more openly and i think it's great that uh independent creators can actually say look i don't want to work for your brand i just want to you know <laughs> do what i do and create like um that thing that makes that that works for me and make a living out of that and i think we're starting to see how art has a value in society too like uh beyond you know like uh, the the art market in itself um i suddenly wanted to collect you know and like before i was into the idea of collecting you know and with my friends like of course we trade sometimes our works and we send each other but now I was like, oh, I want to collect. I want to support back, you know, people. And my first collection was uh, on Hicket Nunc. So <laughs> um, uh, Helena Sarin was my very first, like, generative artist that I collected. Um, but, um, yeah, so on that kind of, like, this is a new 
place for me to kind of uh, explore as well. Like um, I'm not thinking at all about like, uh, you know, secondary market, like <laughs> selling my artworks. Um, but I think it's just so nice, the feeling of like being able to support an artist that you believe in. And um, because I know how important that support is, even if it's symbolic, like even saying, you know, uh, I want to have your work in, in my collection because to me, like it has value. And I just want to communicate that. Um, I think that's important too, you know. Uh, beyond like the, the bidding system, which um, I don't think it's as like problematic as uh, as it's being framed right now. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> no, those are great I, points. I, I want to. Oh. oh, sorry, no, you, Mike, Mike, you go. I just wanted to add to what Jason already alluded to, and I think Sophia to some extent too, is that when it comes to climate, um, we are all sitting in the same boat and we all should be caring a lot about this. This is the fundamental problem of the century. But um, the, the burden on trying to solve it and, and do something about it is not evenly distributed. And so um, those of us who uh, have more and a more privileged and a more privileged position to do something about it bear much more responsibility to do something. And so if NFTs and the ability to access these art markets directly mean that you can feed your family or finally pay off those student debts, by all means, go ahead and use it and don't feel guilty for doing it. Um, because the rich of this world have already been doing the same thing. They've been spending enormous quantities of CO2 and have benefited from it. But on the other hand, if you have made hundreds of thousands of dollars from art sales or from something else, and you simply happen to be in a position where you have the privilege to do something, then the burden is on you to try and move the system towards a more equitable and a more uh, environmentally sustainable state. Right? And so that's what I feel like got lost in, in these awful attacks on, on individual artists. Yes, it was really important to uh, sort of draw attention to the problem. And here we are having this conversation and, and, and things are moving. But at the same time, these personal attacks are neither uh, effective at what they're trying to do, nor are they reasonable um, because you don't know the context of why a person's doing it. So it really depends on, on who you are and, and what your ability is to contribute to the movement. Right? And, this, and just, even just, oh, sorry, no, you, you go, Alex. Add, because on this point of inequality, we had, um, so we work with on a separate uh, note, we work with um, political artists. So it's actually SPSK booth is exhibited here. And Kalajar a month ago did a job of actual NFT that was auctioning a piece of Palestinian soil. Uh, so to sort of show in support of Palestine and um, to highlight what is going on right now. And one of the major news sort of news outlets was doing conducting interviews and they asked uh, whether he feels a certain level of privilege being able to do an NFT given the um, environmental concerns and the lack and sort of the lack of um, like the electricity like electricity scarcity in his region and sort of that just shows the sort of <laughs> the the privilege that you know um, Western society feels towards artists uh, working in like more di more difficult environments. And the fact that um, if you come from a country that has scarce resources, are you not allowed to enter the playing field? I mean, um, so, so that raised a, like a whole new level of debate. And I think generally just like the uh, conversation about the environment is that yes, individuals can play a part and should play a part, um, you know, in, in saving resources and, and uh, moving towards a more, you know, green lifestyle, but there's a lot of privilege attached to that if you are able to. And also it's oftentimes the large corporations and larger groups of people that are using up the most resources, you know, it's not the individual. And so I think um, so much of this conversation was, was directed at NFTs as they were really blowing up the past few months and not maybe looking at cryptocurrency, which has existed for so much longer. Um, and like the blockchain, which has existed for so much longer. Um, and I mean, I was actually on um, on a panel about dig about um, digital fashion, and it was a topic that was brought up about 
you know, the, the environmental impact of the physical fashion industry and how that's, there's a huge impact there versus now like, you know, having like NFT type digital art um, or digital fashion clothing. And so there is an environmental, environmental impact for um, digital art and NFTs, but at the same time, we're completely skipping over the environment, the environmental impact of the physical art industry, you know, any type of show exhibition that goes up for one month, one week, um, the resources that go into shipping and any other material costs of like a large sculpture. There's so many, there are so many environmental impacts there as well. Yeah, um, I don't, I, I, like, I, oh, sorry. oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, I, I usually try to stay away from like what about ism because I, I kind of took that approach in the beginning where I was like, well, what about video games or what about, and it, it found, I found that I just would get into headbutting, but I do on the uh, traditional art market one, that's one where I do kind of stand my ground and, and agree with you in that, you know, these uh, fairs in the last few years that I'm guilty of participating um, in prior to, um, to COVID, you know, I'm thinking Art Basel and whatnot, um, I mean, all of these artworks are being shipped like all around the world. And then all of these people we talk about sort of privileged versus less privileged. You're not seeing a lot of less privileged people fly around the world five times a year in private jets to chase, you know, thousands of containers of art getting shipped all over the place. Now, I don't say that um, because I want to make those people feel bad either. We've just pointed out and rightfully so that shame isn't the right approach. But I do want to point out that um, the, the neat thing or the cool thing or the thing that makes me feel optimistic or positive about NFTs and the digital art market moving forward is that technology can get more efficient right um, on this front. And I think we're already seeing it with people switching to POS. But I'm, I'm not sure that there's a way to make these physical art fairs um, all that much more efficient. And those physical art fairs really cater to a tiny percentage of, of people who um, get to participate. So that neither scales, nor is there a clear path toward becoming more efficient. Now that doesn't absolve our current NFT climate issues, but I'm very optimistic. And I think it's worth pointing out that tech can get more efficient, right? That's a, a neat thing about NFTs. We're already seeing it, right? As we move to POS. So uh, it's just something that I think is, you know, sometimes the whole conversation feels sort of negative and I'm sort of an optimist here in that I feel like these problems are, are, are certainly solvable, which I don't feel like is such the case uh, for the traditional system. I'd be curious to uh, see if the emergence of, of digital art and NFTs and ways to trade this art digitally uh, will replace the more traditional systems, which you're right, the, the whole flying around to galleries around the world is also very expensive, um, or whether it will simply add. Because if it adds, then it's not really helping reduce the amount of physical travel. Um, if it leads to a reduction in that sort of trading uh, with it moving to the digital space, then the impact would be quite significant, yeah. So I think it adds for the best possible reasons. Um, it adds because it opens the doors to people who can't afford to fly around the world, right? So we, we're seeing a democratization of collectors towards this new system. And, and it's that volume that's problematic um, when you have something that's even a little inefficient and you have a ton of people participating, um, it, you know, I think it scales up. But uh, sorry, Sophia, I think I cut you off a second time there. So I'm curious to see what you were saying. No, I'm gonna... Uh... I was going to say, I, I agree with what you mentioned about like, what about this? What about that? Uh, at the same time, I think that, um, well, the blockchain has the kind of the privilege of uh, exposing the transactions. But I found kind of like the irony of someone commenting on Instagram, I'm going to unfollow you now because I'm not like, there's no way I can support people who mint their work through these platforms and ignore the problematic. And I was thinking like, okay, but that those transactions are like exposed, right? So you can kind of calculate like um, the burden, but how would you calculate the burden of like using Instagram? You can't because that's not exposed. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's only exposed because it's in the blockchain. Um, and same, um, like with physical work, you know, like how would you know? I mean, if I'm playing with like acrylics, like different type of toxic materials in my art studio and, you know, I throw all of them like without thinking like into the uh, regular like water, um, you know, um, water drainage. Uh, <laughs> 
um, I would be like polluting the, the ocean with that, like literally. And you cannot see that. Um, and I think like that is important that the conversation doesn't just stay in the blockchain. You know, if it's just gonna stay, if we're only gonna care about the environment, only if we were talking about the blockchain and then like everything else, it doesn't matter. <laughs> then like, okay, but what's the point, right? Um, I think the whole point is that this can teach us that transactions have a burden, that electricity is important, like where is electricity sourced, right? And now we're actually talking a lot more about is this like uh, renewable or non-renewable? And there, there's finally more of a conversation about that, which is something that like I, I was already thinking for a while, like how are we powering our GPUs? How, where is all this computation being powered? Um, and, and I think that's, that's great that's happening because um, we don't need, the truth is that the planet has so many energy resources that we don't like really need to be burning uh, coal or, you know, fossil fuels. Um, and uh, this is like, you know, there are kind of these two approaches, of course, like uh, we can't just switch all like <laughs> uh, in the blink of an eye. Uh, what we can do is like try to reduce it as much as possible while that happens. Um, but it's important to be talking about it too. Like exactly. I think with the opportunity, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think there's a lag. Um, I just wanted to pick up on the notes of talking about it because it feels like there, because everything is so new, there isn't a system of incentives for people to write um, the story and the narrative. So all that people would hear is the massive sales or one or two people who have a lot of followers on Twitter or Instagram saying this and that. Like there, there are no sort of unbiased opinion makers in the market as we see right now. And I think this is a hole that needs to be filled. And as we see, like, I think, uh, Jason, I would love to hear like after Mike a bit more about what you're doing because it sounds like, you know, you're sort of taking initiative where people donate towards a cause that's aiming to bring a bit more clarity to what can be possible. Sure, um, yeah, Mike. I I just wanted to respond to uh, to Sophia too, and this idea of what aboutism. It's a very common argument that's given in all, not just NFTs, but in all environmental conversations. Well, what about this other thing? What about this other thing? And the way to think about that and respond to it is that is yes and. It's like this is a problem, and yes, these other things are also problems, and we need to solve them all. The thing about the climate uh, issue is that the necessary reduction in emission is almost total. It, it's not like which part of this should we reduce? We have to solve all of these problems. And if any one of these areas fails, we're in trouble. This is how big and important the problem is. So we need to solve the energy problem of transactions. We also need to solve the energy problems of, of Instagram and other data centers. All of this needs to get um, decarbonized, all of this electricity um, and other toxins. You know, like I used to work casting lead glass and I've stopped doing that even though it's harder to work in non-lead glass because the idea of putting more lead out in the world just doesn't it's not a doesn't, doesn't make me happy right so it's not right and so but all of these things come with burdens it's harder to do things it's really easy to burn coal and get electricity it's fantastic but the problem is we are borrowing energy from the future we're not cleaning up our stuff right we're essentially borrowing from our children and we can't keep doing that it's just not sustainable so when people go, well, what about this other thing? What about flying? Yes, we also need to stop flying. And we have to do this over here. I like the, uh, the yes and approach. I had a friend who's a professional improv comic, and I think they teach that in her training class. You always say yes and to keep the conversation going, but I like seeing it applied here too. Uh, Alex, to, to your question, actually, I think uh, what's interesting about the Green NFTs initiative is that I'm not a, a climate expert or a blockchain expert, right? But I, I knew as being part of this community for four years now that there's such a strong community initiative here that if I just kind of raised my hand and stuck my neck out, even though I have no business doing this, that there's so many good people in this space that would flock to support it, uh, that, that, you know, we could build up the, the system to longer term allow for people to, to contribute solutions. So right away, you know, Fanny Lockaboy, who I think we all know, uh, came in and started helping with the organizational side. Thousands of people made donations and we had 
quadratic um, uh, donations such that uh, the matching wasn't based on uh, across all the, so we were working with Gitcoin and there's a bunch of different initiatives and it's not whoever sends the most money to an initiative that gets matching. It's based on the number of, um, of donations that come in. That way people that don't have as much money can have more of a say in where the money goes, right? And ours was in particular was a pretty popular one. So uh, the kinds of solutions that we're seeing, um, there was one around lazy minting. So uh, for folks that don't know, one way to help with the environment is to not mint something until you have a buyer, which sounds kind of obvious, but um, the sort of the, the paradigm early on was people would just mint everything because if you minted it, it would get into the marketplace, which means it would be in front of more eyeballs, which would mean that there's like a higher likelihood that it would sell. So OpenSea and Mintable, I think, pioneered lazy minting, um, but they were closed source solutions. So one of the solutions that came through was an open source uh, protocol for lazy minting, right? Which I think is pretty neat. Other people can start to develop on that or, or adopt that. Um, other ones were just helping people understand how to break down each transaction um, into smaller parts. So what is it that's actually causing the issue? And you know, how do we look at those and compare them to uh, other energy uh, sources of energy consumption. So yeah, I just think, um, you know, a pretty neat set of uh, projects that came in across a wide variety uh, and range of, of solutions. And I'm excited to sort of see them uh, continue along. Although I'm also somewhat optimistic that if, uh, if Ethereum, I mean, I know they've been saying for years that they're gonna move to POS, but if they move to POS sometime late this year, early next year, I do think a lot of this problem goes away um, in terms of NFTs and minting. Um, but I, I also think change is hard on people. And um, as much as everyone's fully, you know, I want to fully validate people's feelings that like environmental damage is like bad. I think there's also a little bit of like schadenfreude um, against NFTs because people are like, don't necessarily like them because they're new and they kind of challenge existing, you know, uh, paradigms. So like, you know, before it was the environment, it was like they're commodifying, you know, art. Before that, it was like something. So, you know, I, that's why I think it's so important that we build up um, as a community sort of decentralized um, solutions where when, when and if we get the environmental challenges solved, there'll be other things coming down the pipe that we need to kind of build strength as a community around so that we can figure out rather than attacking each other, how, how we can sort of help shape this into the kind of community that we want. And I guess the, the last thing I'll tack on to that is it does kind of bum me out that um, artists bear the brunt of this, right? So I think if you look sort of like historically, artists like not having a huge impact on the environment, not really, um, you know, taking advantage of as many resources and not really um, getting paid fairly um, for, for the work and how they contribute to our lifestyles. And we finally start to, to move in a direction where it looks kind of promising and like everyone's like, no, you know, so. Um, you know, I, I'm eager to, to get this problem to uh, under wraps and, and, you know, but, but I'm also um, a believer that we could see other uh, objections coming down the pipe. But I, I, and I guess the last thing I'll say, because I don't want to talk too, too much, is that this is a chance also for us to show how quickly, as artists who generally care a lot about the environment, in my experience, we can show how quickly um, a vertical or an industry can acknowledge a problem, work together, solve it, and maybe not just go um, to where we're, we're not causing a problem, but imagine a world where this time next year, every platform when you go to buy, 20% of what you spend goes towards you know, uh, other environmental research, even when you know, NFTs have gone beyond no longer causing environmental issues, right? We could like tie on other things so that we're actually environmentally positive instead of environmentally, environmentally negative. And I think sort of as the, the altruistic environment loving kind of group that we are as artists, you know, this is our chance to kind of to, to not just um, cover our tracks, but to show a positive direction. And I think that's what's so special about, you know, NFTs in general. And I think this can maybe be a general statement about emerging technologies or just anything um, new that happens um, in the world is that it, it always brings up a lot of questions and topics of conversation. And so I think first we had just general transparency about the art world, about um, which was coming from NFTs. Um, and that's kind of trickled into the mainstream art world and you know, helping in, is helping out artists and collectors and um, galleries to you know, talk about different issues. And I think the same thing now is happening with the environment is that um, we're talking about it now. And unfortunately, it often is the artists who are bearing the brunt of that, um, of that conversation, having to be the pioneer to that forces people to begin talking about it. 
but hopefully these conversations will trickle into other aspects of everyone's lives and the art world in general and just thinking about how we use resources. Exactly. And so I guess also a question to um, you kind of touched on this a bit, Jason, is like I've seen um, some responses to the um, kind of the environmental impact of NFTs is to have um, is to kind of move in the direction of investing in green energy or um, kind of using investment to off put the energy, the energy that's used in NFTs. And do we think I would be curious to hear your opinions if we think this is a um, sustainable solution or maybe part of the solution or maybe, or, or is it just a way for people to feel better about it? <laughs> yeah. Are you talking uh, about uh, carbon? Sorry. Are you talking about carbon offsets specifically? Exactly. Carbon offsets okay. with um, yep. like different types of investment. Yes. Yeah. I can give a quick answer, but I think Mike's probably better qualified to talk about, like, I don't know the details about carbon offsets, but my, sort of philosophically from my perspective, some of the teams that um, submitted solutions to the green NFTs um, initiative did focus on carbon um, offsets. And I think um, they're a part from my perspective, they're a part of the solution. I'm very well aware from all the people I've talked about with this subject that many people feel like, you know, that's not a, a real solution and you're just borrowing, you know, um, pushing the, the problem further on. And like, that we need a, 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 by focusing on that, sometimes we're not solving the real problem. So I've heard a lot of criticism of it. But at the same time, I think we need to be careful that if people have good intentions and are exploring ways to move even marginally in the right direction, that we don't beat them down the same way we beat down the artists, right? I think we just need to assume, I've yet to meet one person who's just thrilled to burn the planet down, right? So I, I think as people try to do better, and even if it's not the optimal solution, um, we need to keep the tone such that like we embrace any attempt at, at improving and then maybe make friends with people and talk more about um, uh, how these things can combine, uh, combine together to, to be a, a larger solution. But I'm definitely not um, a carbon uh, credits expert. So I, I don't know, Mike, if you, if you know a bit more, it might be interesting to get a more informed perspective. Um, I completely agree with you that uh, it's, it's really important to keep an optimistic and productive mindset. This is a really big problem. And if we are sort of, um, uh, doomsday-ish about it, then it, it makes people say, oh, screw it, it's all screwed anyway. That's not the right attitude, um, but it is a big challenge. In terms of um, in terms of carbon credits and, and offsets, um, I think a lot of the criticism is really valid. Um, we can't offset our way out of this problem overall. Um, there isn't enough space to grow all these trees. There, just you, you can't suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere at this, at the rate required. Um, so, uh, yes, it's, it's good that people are thinking about this thing, but, um, there is no current negative emissions technology that can really just solve the problem. We can keep doing what we're doing. It's most important that we stop emitting. That is, uh, it's actually worse than that. Not only do we have to stop emitting, we have to do negative emissions on top of that in order to keep the temperature stable. And, and this is not in one or the other. So you can't. You can sort of solve your burden by doing the negative emissions because you're going to have to do that anyway on top of not emitting. We have already sort of spent so much of our carbon budget essentially that the, these negative emissions have to go towards what our existing debt essentially. It's the yes and again, right? It's again, it's the yes and. Yes and all of these other things as well in parallel. Yeah, I'd be curious, Sophia, I know that, you know, because I'm a collector of yours, and I, I think I have some of your early NFTs uh, from from as an artist, from your perspective, has this put co cold water on like NFT? So a lot of the artists I collected early on kind of stopped making NFTs and others had sort of just started now that Hicket Monk is here, you know, um, as you've been making NFTs over the, and not a lot of them, if, if I recall correctly, over the last few years, you know, how has the climate conversation changed your um, production or thoughts about NFTs as a way of sharing, selling, you know, your, your art? Yeah, I, it's been, um, it's been kind of strange because, uh, well, you actually bought, I think my very first NFT. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, it's been like kind of strange for us because we like, uh, I started without really knowing much about the space, kind of like looking at it and seeing like, okay, hmm, how does this even work? 
uh, and then suddenly it's like a bag of stigma got thrown onto like um, onto us, and then there were all these kind of um, issues around like uh, the environment, capitalism. I've seen like on my network artists who say like I could make a living out of this, but I'm choosing not to, and sharing like a. Uh, an image of a brick that says here I'm dropping this shame on you and I was like oh god no like <laughs> why does it have to be so literal um and at the same time I think like part of the reason why uh we are talking about the environment is because it's so pressing and so late right um but at the same time is if we approach it from desperation I think we run into the issue that um, there's going to be like uh, segregation, like people who are the, the good ones and the bad ones. And that's that's what I personally don't like so much. Um, I think that um, like I'm in touch with artists who have like starting to pay their debts thanks to NFTs too, you know. Um, or artists who couldn't make a living like from art before that and um and they aren't like actively saying like oh um you know like nfts are the panacea of all our problems like the, they're not saying that either or supporting uh like <laughs> destroying the planet at the same time yeah like um it's hard for them to navigate like all the criticism um, for me too, um, it's hard because it it found me at the stage where I was like uh, trying to kind of navigate my own mental health, and then you know like um, all of this uh, got thrown at me, and I started to actually think a lot like how it's important to open up a conversation about artists navigating like mental health in the art market now today. Um, you know how. It, it affects us like if a, if a collector withdraws a bid <laughs> and you couldn't accept it fast enough or you know like that 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 could like pay for something or you know like um how you navigate the the art world you know i think like uh the fact that there are so many more people involved means that we can have more conversations about it um unfortunately i'm not very uh using clubhouse <laughs> as much i know that like a lot of people are using that but <laughs> to talk about these things um but yeah it's 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 complex that's basically uh what i can say and i think too like so often especially i mean not in a space where the artists and collectors are so in touch as we see in the kind of like nft um, sector, digital art sector is, um, I think collectors and generally the art world can forget the artists are real people who are dealing with their own struggles, who, you know, are just like living their life and this is their occupation. I mean, it's also their passion, but it's their job. Um, and so I think like, I think with this closer connection between artists, collectors, um, people working in the art industry, that's definitely a good thing to kind of put a face to a name when it comes to artists um, and probably, and, you know, stop this and hopefully, you know, begin stopping this blame that's, you know, put on an artist and forgetting that that's um, a real person. And I think we all saw this issue too with like the pandemic, not seeing people face to face when we're just communicating online. It's it's really easy to kind of feel that, um, you know, that um, like not actually have interactions with people as though they're real people, just seeing them through the internet. Um, and, but also I think with your work specifically, Sophia, I mean, you, your work is so environmentally focused. So, um, I mean, the fact that you're even just thinking about, you're obviously really invested in the environment and the fact that you're thinking and having these conversations about the environment, the environmental impact of NFTs mean you're, means you're doing a lot, you know, more for the space than other people who aren't even thinking about it and who are, you know, minting without, without thinking about any type of repercussions or anything. So, I think just having the conversation is really moving moving this um, this topic along. Yeah, and it, so it goes back to what we talked about earlier at the beginning that so these personal attacks uh, are, are really not effective at, at achieving what 
the person attacking is supposedly trying to do, right? Like um, the right way here is if you have energy, put the energy into creating the alternatives that are less impactful, that allow people to make the choices that allow them to make a living and reduce their impact. So like, you know, advocate for uh, proof of stake, um, start minting your work on chains that use uh, proof of stake, you know, all of these things start moving the focus away from from proof of work uh, systems, and it puts pressure on the on the on the on the blockchain um, engineers to move faster and move make those transitions earlier. Definitely, that I mean, that was a really great wrap up. <laughs> really, as we kind of move to the end of our conversation, thank you, Mike. That you took my job away. <laughs> that was great. Um, so, if, if anyone has any closing thoughts, maybe we can kind of say them now, but um, overall, I think this was a really, really interesting conversation and obviously something that will continue to develop in the next, um, I mean, the fact that we've already had so many developments with this topic in the past few months, but I'm sure over the next year, two years, you know, as technology develops, as we all talk about and think about things in different ways, we'll, we'll definitely see huge strides. Great, well, thank you so much everyone for joining. And I'm excited to see you, you know, at the fair. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, thanks. It's nice right. talking with you all. Yeah. yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.